the average time a recruiter spend scanning a resume is only six or seven seconds. Certainly in the last five years, a lot of people have lost jobs through no fault of their own. And then there's this thing about reciprocity, consciously or not, if someone engages with my content and they ask me for a coffee, for a virtual coffee, feel like you want to reciprocate. If you're not happy with the scenario, change it. Because all you can do is play the cards you're dealt, right? If you're not happy with them, change it. What are your thoughts? I mean, be interested to kind of get your perspective on a few things, but maybe just to start with, How's 2024 gone? Like, what are your yeah. kind of thoughts on it? And you know, I think it's just we just segued from 2023. Um, if you asked me this question a year ago, um, I think we, yeah, kind of the geopolitical stuff and the economy, and you know, obviously there's inflation globally and some of the uncertainty. I think a lot of companies were very, very cautious, right? You know, no, let's, sure. let's, let's be careful quarter to quarter. And I think that we've segued into 2024 the same because I almost feel like folks anticipated uh, some downturn in the market, you know, uh, and it really, you know, it hasn't happened. So, yeah. You know, we, we continue cautiously, continue to do business to, you know, stick to strategic plans, you know, most most companies have a strategic plan and it's laid out for three years and you know i think most folks are trying to stay on course and but prepared if they need to adjust so yeah yeah, for yeah, now, yeah. i think it's proceed with caution yeah yeah last year because last year it was a bit dependent on the sector but i think generally it was tough i think for most people you know i mean you guys are you know you guys are always run things well don't you you know like smooth you don't go crazy on the high you know you're always like you know nice nice steady um and, and it's great there's so many other sectors um like financial services and tech probably the two biggest one they just and they, they, they they've made a lot of redundancies last year i saw that yeah i saw especially in tech uh financial services as well yeah we're in healthcare so um you know Thankfully, you know, that's, that's a, that's an industry of a sector that, uh, you know, is, is somewhat, somewhat stable, you know, you know, yeah. regardless of, uh, you know, what, what else is happening in the world. But yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it, it is by sector, you know, <clears throat> I think it's still proceed with caution, you know, and, uh, and we'll see, you know, and different things impact, you know, like here in the States, so in the U S um, you know, this is an election year that, Yes. Yeah. Folks are waiting to see, kind of see how things, you know, if that, that may change, if an administration changes and also if, um, you know, that may impact, you know, uh, new rules, laws, you know, things of that nature. So, so. True. I heard there are 70 world elections this year. That's right. I remember hearing. I think the there's same. been a couple already. I think there's been a couple already, but just, just this whole of the year. Um, which is crazy, right? Because like your world view almost needs to completely adjust in as this year goes on. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm optimistic. You know, I think, uh, and and certainly, you know, in the in the space, you know, as recruiters, you know, we're always looking for top talent, whether the market's, um, yeah. you know, strong, or you know, you know, as we we. We're dealing with, you know, war for talent a couple of years ago. Now, you know, it's, the tides have changed, but we're always looking for the best talent out there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. For us, it's been interesting because, again, like last year was slower. And then like November, December, we started to see a little bit of an uptick in new searches. And then also like some of the economic data was a bit more positive. You know, like the U.S. has actually done pretty well, the economy you're starting to hear a little bit of positivity and then people are a little bit more optimistic and then, you know, that has a knock on um, in hiring. And also, like, if you jump on LinkedIn now as well, it's interesting because a few months ago it was it was like, you know, I'm really, you know, sad to say I'm leaving my job. You know, you saw a lot of those messages. Um, recently on LinkedIn, it's like, congratulations, new job. Congratulations, new job. Congra so you're really, you're, start, you're starting to see a lot of people land now who were out. Um because in our in our space in TA and 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 consultant and the consult consultancies like mine, there were a lot of people made redundant last year. Overall, a lot of TA folks in different sectors, and you're seeing them start to land now, which is uh, which is good. 
That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Our, um, the, our team here, um, you know, it's been, I think last year was flat, but we, we, we did some significant, uh, additions to building out our, our TA team and, and also the structure of how we support our business. So, um, yeah, it's good. It's good to see that things are turning. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. So hopefully we'll continue. Hopefully. The wind, you know, the wind, the wind is funny because I was speaking to someone else about this, you know, been, I mean, you've been in it long, a little, bit, little bit longer than me, right? Um, but not much longer, not much longer. Not much longer. Um, <laughs> but it's just, it's cyclical, you know, like you it just, it's, it's, you know, every, every four or five years, you know, like it's just incredible amount of hiring and then a little dip and then you go again. And then it's just these, like these waves and stuff. Um, and for a lot of people that haven't been through it, because it's been constant hiring since mid 2020. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's been in. And then if you look at, look back on dating myself, but I remember when I first came into the industry, it was, it was the late nineties and it was uh, the te uh, telecom and the IT, uh, you know, time frame. It was a huge, huge, uh, growth period. And then, you know, early 2009, 11, you know, um, and then later in the early 2000s and 2007, 2008, 2009, we, we had another bump. Um, and then I think that was more steadier, a steadier period of growth. Um, and then COVID, right. The last four years, you know, kind of came to a screeching halt, but then quickly ramped up. Right. And we were, yeah. before we knew it, we were in this talent war and, and how employers, um, hired and where they hired, right. Remote and hybrid became a, a real thing and accelerated, you know, how, um, you know, we looked at our organizations and how folks, you know, perform their jobs. So. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Interestingly, and leading on to the only thing I want to talk about, job hopping. Yeah. Because um, I had, I mean, I hear this all the time, right? Like I'm, I'm recruiting and, you know, my, my conversation, you know, when, when we're recruiting, the conversations are completely private, right? Like hiring manager, recruiter, you know, whether it's in you know, an internal TA or agency, whatever, it's just, it's, it's you know, private conversations. And so often you hear, like, people are always cautious, rightly or wrongly, maybe we can talk about this, um, they, they don't want to hire a job offer, right? It's like, you know, you always see the same thing. Whether they say it and vocalize it, you can see it in the face when you're going through the profile. It's sure. like, oh, they've, you know, they've hopped around a bit, you know, whatever, whatever they say. And interestingly, if, you know, we look back at these last five years, like a lot of people might have had quite a few jobs through no fault of their own, you know, but then still, if you're hiring and you've seen someone, let's say that's had whatever, three jobs in four years or something, as a hiring manager, I still, people are so reluctant not there to even. Yeah. I think you get an initial reaction. What, what, what's the, I, I remember seeing this uh, not too long ago, right? For a recruiter, the average time a recruiter spends scanning a resume is is only i think six or seven seconds right it you know when, when you're going through volume recruiting now you know obviously at different levels uh you know you may spend a little bit more time digging it but your your resume right your cv is is a quick snapshot of your job history and and kind of a little bit about yourself your job history is very relevant when you look at it for folks to make quick observations on you know, reliability and consistency, right? So if, and it's a, maybe a natural assumption that if someone is moving, right, from one job to the next, are they reliable? Are they, can, are they going to be a consistent um, producer in your organization, right? And, and companies are always hiring for the long, right? And whether yeah. it's, you know, they join you, and, and there is good job hopping, right? Healthy job hopping is you hopping within your company into your other roles and growing your career. Um, but I, I remember, I forget who I was talking to. I always, you know, someone said, you know, kind of equate, you know, uh, your your history, you know, your employment history, almost to like, here in the state, your, your credit history. How, how consistent and reliable are you, you know, with even like managing your your, your expenses? And, you know, is there, you know, a correlation to, you know, reliability and consistency, you know, and, you know, you and I talk about sports all the time, 
Yeah. I think a lot of coaches or teams, um, you know, they always want that top talented um, superstar in their, in their roster, but they'll, they'll often take really good, consistent performers because in the long haul, that's the game, right? Consistency. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll give you, but I'll, I'll contradict myself because I'll give you an example. Uh, this is uh, probably in the last, uh, I, I want to say last year, I had a candidate who at first glance, you know, they had, you know, several moves in the period, let's, let's call it five years. But there was, a, there was a, some strong relevant experience. And what you do want to understand is the story behind it. Because some of those moves may be out of their control, right? It may have been opportunistic, but it may have been a personal or un, a professional related situation that they couldn't control. Yeah. And um, I think it's also understanding some of that story. Because fast forward, you could have a really good person that may have gone through some stuff, you know, and um, you, you don't want to miss the opportunity because they, they, they could be a, a gem, you know, a hidden gem there somewhere. So, you know, I, I'll also say that because I've, I've had that experience as well and it's proved positive. Yeah, no, no, I think I think it's I think it's a tough one. But I do think certainly in the last five years, a lot of people have lost jobs through no fault of their own. Um, like I met a candidate the other day, and and then and his CV resume, it was it was like a, it was three jobs in in a few years, and the first thought, and you can't help it, I don't know why, the first thought that goes into my mind is like, oh, you know, job hopper. It, and it's subjective, right? But I do know because I speak with so many people every day that a lot of people are just, you know, and I knew the sectors that they were in, and I thought, you know what, um, and I knew one of the firms had made redundancy, so I like let in, and I said, look, hey, let's have a chat. And once you hit, once I heard the story, and he was like, "Look, you know, this firm got sold. We all got made redundant, right? And then this firm I joined, I got, we got made redundant, you know. And then suddenly, it's 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 uh, this context to it, and a wonderful candidate. And if if a hiring manager was open enough to meet them, and then you know, lean in and understand the story, then they would have got you know a great hire. I do find though that so many." people are put off by short tenures yeah. without wanting to I'll dig in. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, you know, a, a good recruiter may peel back the onion a little bit and say, well, you know what, let me, let me understand. Let me, maybe have a screen uh, of this person and you may uncover like you just shared. I think the other important thing is, you know, you and I, uh, you know, we partner uh, and do, you know, we're, we're here to, you know, help fill jobs for organizations. I'm I'm on the the corporate side. You're on the uh, the agency side. How you tell that story to someone like myself or a hiring manager is so so important. And I think um, you know those summaries, those write ups, understanding a little bit about that person's background and and uh, you know the lineage of how uh, you know they got to where they are and and, and the details around you know maybe some of those moves, uh, painting a, a picture with would certainly you know help potentially help someone get more comfortable yeah yeah and that's super true yeah if, mm -hmm. i mean absolutely yeah because if we're working together um well you know if there's an agency involved you know whatever it might be we can we can really tell the story and help paint a picture um i guess people aren't so fortunate if they're just applying for a job through an advert and you're one of 200 people applied it's mm -hmm. it's super difficult really it is difficult, isn't it? it is yeah i i think uh you know Having someone present them, uh, whether it's a referral or an agent like yourself, um, yeah. you know, gives a little bit more credibility to at least take a deeper or closer look. Yeah. What would you do if you were the candidate? So I had a guy. He was yeah. like, I didn't know what to do. I've you know had all these different jobs and you know nothing on my own. Asking me for some advice on he couldn't even get an interview. He couldn't get yeah. Uh, can get hasn't had him no it's just it's been like a while he feel, he feels like he's been passed over because he's had so many jobs but yeah. you know like feedback's been mm, he hasn't got so much he hasn't got so much feedback um, yeah I think, god i'm sorry no no i i would you know i think an endorsement or referral comes in valuable there i know linkedin has some pictures like that um 
So, you, you know, and you know this better than I do, you know, you start to, you know, if you're, if you're targeting a specific job in a company, see the folks that work at that company and see if you, your connection, if you have any connection. And if it's, um, if it's a, it's a good connection, someone that you, you feel could endorse you and would refer you that can overcome some of that initial, you know, that challenge. Yeah, and no, I agree. I agree. The great thing with LinkedIn now is, you know, you can do it from your home. Um, one thing, one thing I actually really um, advocate is, you know, if you want to get into a certain company, um, let's say you want to get into Henry Shine, you can start liking and commenting on Dave's stuff, right? right. So if you start posting, you, you notice people, right? Like you'll notice people. If you comment on my stuff, you go, I'm going to notice that you. And then if you send me a DM, I'll be like, oh, ah, yeah, who's this person that's been liking and commenting on all my stuff? And if you ask, you know, if I want to have a virtual coffee or whatever, I'm so likely to say yes, because I just feel so good that you've been liking on all of my stuff. Um, so it really, really works, you know. So so I would like, if, you, if there's a bunch of companies that you want to work for, find the, the people that are relevant, like all of their content if they're doing content, comment on it if they're doing, you know, and then send them messages. Um, and... I, I spoke to the guy the other day, they did that and it worked. They got an interview, you know, um, straight through, got the job and, you know, because there's something about, it's quite flattering when you, you know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, you know, we're, you know, especially if you're, 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 you're taking the time to acknowledge someone else's material or post, those folks are always going to go back, right? They're going to see how it's doing. Do, uh, do folks like it, right? We, we, we have a tendency to kind of see, you know, how did that, that post or that comment or that article do? And yeah, those are, those are those observations that on the, on the other side could be beneficial to someone, right? You, you're, you, you're also indirectly kind of, um, expressing interest, right? Showing curiosity. So the, yeah. those are, those are powerful, like superpowers that if you have, in any, all right, uh, you know, background, people are attracted to that because, you know, that's that's potentially someone who can add value, you know, in a professional way, you know, whatever they yeah, hundred percent. And it's just this this networking thing, you know, like if you if you if you lean in, um, and if you contribute to the conversation and you network, and this is digital networking, we talk about liking on, on stuff, people stuff. Um, you, and then there's this thing about reciprocity, like right. consciously or not, if, if someone, you know, engages with my content and they ask me for a coffee, for a virtual coffee, you, you feel you feel like you want to reciprocate. You know, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to read all my stuff. You just, it's, it's a subconscious thing, but you, right. you're really likely to be, yeah, absolutely. I'll, you know, for sure I'll have a chat with you. Yeah, so much of um, what we do is network, right? And, and conversations and... It's all about the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think if you're, you know, if you're in a, a scenario where your CV, been no fault of your own, is choppy, jumpy, um, yeah, the LinkedIn networking thing is like a really good way, um, really good way to do it. Um, one of the other thing I want to talk about you about is commute yeah. or quit. Um, and this is this, you, you know, like we've been talking about, it feels like we've been talking about flexible working for ages. And I remember, I remember coming to see you before COVID in your offices in Long Island. And and I remember pre-COVID, you know, the, the prerequisite for hiring for your firm in America and, and most other places was in the office five days a week, pretty much. Um, and I think you were, in, you were in the office five days a week as well, I think, um, pre-COVID. Um, and I, I know you guys have, have changed considerably. I'd lo love to hear, kind of the, you know, how, how that's evolved. Um, but what we're seeing now is a raft of companies wanting people back into an office and that's whether it's five days four days three days fixed days flexible days um whatever some are like come in whenever you want um and, and you're finding now people if they're used to doing something and it's being changed on them they're starting to feel i don't want to you know yeah yeah i think uh and you're right yeah bro prior to covid four years ago today most uh, at least you know kind of shy most folks were office based uh or in the field right but those folks their jobs were traditionally field work 
now uh, predominantly you're we're, we're either in a hybrid or a remote situation and uh, where we're uh, an HR function we were all in the office um, we're all remote you know we, we have some all of, all of us yeah except for you know the folks and it's on a rotational cycle you know wherever we have a premises um, you know we always have an HR person on site um, we could do our jobs remotely and my initial observation you know I thought um, it actually made us m more efficient, right? Um, I guess um, really you're you're in front of your computer and you can really just focus on work. There's less distractions and things like that. But you know some of the the culture piece, right? We we know that it may have suffered because you know we like being around folks and you know greeting and having a cup of coffee and you know, chatting or going out to lunch with our colleagues. And, um, yeah, that changed, you know, we, you know, like I mentioned, we're today, you know, our corporate office, um, you know, we've consolidated, we, we, we've updated. It looks beautiful. Uh, but we have a hoteling type of arrangement that you can reserve space as you need. Right. Um, and that's for, you know, whether you're hybrid or remote, you like to come yeah. in and you want some quiet space. We have space for you. And, and uh, it, it's it's a good model. I think what we're focused on is how do we continually keep um, connected with our employees and engage and create events opportunities for us to get together, um, whether it's on a you know individual or a team basis or as a as a company. Yeah, um, but that. yeah, yeah. The, the commuter quit. You know, uh, you know when companies swung right, they went swung one way and they swung the other way, right? Yeah, that, but it went like obviously everyone was at home. Yeah, pretty much. And if you're an office based job um, and then it felt like at least a lot of people were really happy. Let's, some were, some weren't. Right. I mean, some they didn't have a space you know, spot to work at home. They're on their own. You know, there's a lot of um, I think there's a lot of people that struggled over COVID with, with all of that. Um, we then seem to arrive at like some kind of hybrid scenario for people. And then for some one reason or another, some quite a few firms are wanting like really to get people back in mm -hmm. now yeah and and i think that was a challenge right so we you know some companies were sitting back to see how that would react you know how how those yeah. employees from those companies would react and to your point some was like you know I, I don't want to go back they may have changed their lifestyle they may have relocated right yes and in, in the in, during that period, so now I can't. In fact, I, I had someone who opportunistically we hired because their company asked them, "Well, you know, your role now we want you in corporate." And they, when they first signed in, right, and they were hired during COVID, the the the, the role was remote, and they just couldn't do it. It wasn't, you know, family and proximity was it wasn't realistic to to they would have to make a life changing decision. They weren't ready, so they they um. They left and our role remains for that function remain is, is remote. So we were, we were uh, the beneficiary of that situation based on our structure. But yeah, that's, that's something that um, I know, you know, company CEOs struggle with on what's the right yeah. balance. It's hard, isn't it? Cause it's yeah. also, you're going to do what's right for the company. And I think as an individual, the big thing I'd say actually is if it's been changed and you don't complain, do something about it. There's so many people complaining. Oh, you know, like, like oh, they must be back in or something, right? I'm like, right. well, do something. You know, like if, if you don't want to commute, I hear, uh, I hear from some colleagues that it's about, I've got some colleagues that live in New Jersey and it's, they said it's about $100 a day to commute into Manhattan or something with the train and whatever it might be. So it's a lot, you know, if you're used to not spending that and you've got to go in, there's the cost, there's the time. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you do have to, like, if you're not happy with the scenario, change it, you know, like just because all you can do is play the cards you're dealt, right? And right. if you're not happy with them, change it. Um, and so that's what I would say for people, I think. I think also it's tough, the other, the other side, if you're a manager asking your team to come back in five days a week, when they're really cool working at home, 
because I've spoken to a lot of people in that scenario and they're like, Lewis, like, what, what do I do? <laughs> like, my team are really happy and I'm being told that I need to get them back in. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough situation. Yes. I think, um, you know, you, you're in a position where um, there's a balance, you know, you have to strike a balance between, uh, yeah. you know, folks you got are, and does a job require it. And um, I think what, what employees want is a good reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. to, to make that shift and it, you're right. Do something about it. I think you, you said it well, if, if you're not happy, don't complain, you know, yeah, yeah. Provide a solution. You hear, you hear so often. The other thing I do also hearing, and I'm not mentioning any specific companies, but there were a lot of companies that got tax breaks to set up in certain cities. Oh, really? So, yeah. And so then, yeah, so loads, like factories, whatever it might be. Um, and then COVID came, so people were working at home. A lot of people, not everyone's gone back, and it's had a knock-on effect in the local economy. And so some of these countries or cities, you know, depending on where it is in the world, are like, we want you back in. We want to get you, you know, your team to come back in. And so that is also like the real, this real estate thing. I think that's, that's been a little bit of a driver as well. Um, you know, yeah. or you can go work for Elon Musk and it's 24 seven in the office, but at least you know where you stand. <laughs> at least you know where you stand with Elon. That's true. Yeah. He's, he sleeps on the, uh, uh, manufacturing and distribution distribution floor. I don't know what he has to. Yeah. But you know, I'm, I'm, I like that because you know, because it's something like what we've been talking about is when is when something gets taken away from you. You know, like if you're used to working you know, in your current company, and then they ask you to change. You know, that's emotionally people get quite upset. I think about by the change, but if you're applying for a job or if you're if you're trying to hire someone. And you're completely open with, you know, it's whatever it is, fully remote or fully in the office or hybrid or whatever it might be. But, you know, for me, if I communicate it to people up front and everyone knows where they stand, mm -hmm. then at least, you know, people can make the right decision for them. And I think the issue comes when it gets changed on you. Exactly. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, as you know, as recruiters, um, it, it, a lot of it is about managing and setting expectations. Right. And, um, yeah, when that changes, I think people just have a, 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 a you know, an emotional reaction to that. And, um, yeah. you know, it, it affects others more than some more than others. And, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been a, an interesting, you know, looking back over the last four years and, um, you know, this being a dilemma or an opportunity, depending on how you look at it. Um, it certainly changed the way we work, right? How companies do business, how employees look at and evaluate companies, right? They they may know that they have different options. And I think that that um, kind of pushed us into that war for talent, right? Where, you know, um, there was a shift in work and um, in, candidate, in candidates and, you know, you know, salaries were changing. Candidates had more opportunities. Um, it was very, you know, very common, you know, for candidates to have multiple offers. And yeah. part of that was the work-life balance. And uh, yeah, I think that we've settled in a little bit now from that. Yeah. Um, but... I think it's been um, the one interesting thing for me is that with the with the the flexibility on location. Has meant like you you can source some wider talent pools now, you know. Like there's a lot of jobs. Certainly some of the some of the leadership roles that we, that we do. Certainly regional roles. I, I find more and more companies don't mind where people are based, you know. And and suddenly you know, if it's like a North American role, head of something or other, or you know, if I'm doing stuff in Europe, you know, if it's a European role, mo most most companies are like, hey, you know, we don't mind where it's based as long as we have a payroll there. You know, and so suddenly the talent pool just goes like this. And then you've got more options. You can make, you know, hopefully get a, a better hire or the right person for the right job. Um, and so for me, recruiting um, 
if there's a front line of recruiting, but recruiting on the front line, yeah. um, you know, it's been a huge, huge impact. It, it has been, I, I, you know, speak for myself, you know, even from, you know, just our, the, the team that we have, our, our talent acquisition recruiters, um, we, we've been able, I think the last three members of our team have uh, all remote, none locally to where the position traditionally resided. And uh, yeah, there seems to be more and more uh, flexibility, revisiting a role that may have been uh, at a, in, in a location um, to be remote or at least to be in proximity, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've, I've seen a few of the jobs now where um, the leadership roles that we want them in in a reasonable proximity to get, you know, that they can get there, um, you know, maybe a, a few hours away, but, you know, drive yeah. away. Yeah, because also that like, flexibility goes both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's the other. That's the other thing I think one has to remember that because, you know, the company, you know, give you flexibility. You need to be there for them. You know, if you need to see the team, you need to travel to this office, and you know, so you've got to be willing to, willing to do both. I want to. I want to give you thoughts on one last thing, which on yeah, that, please. which I don't know if you saw this. There's a there's a video on TikTok about this um, this young guy, um basically was invited to the ATM meeting and refused to go. Okay. I don't know if you saw that. So basically, he videoed himself. He said that they've invited me for an ATM meeting, but my office, my hours are nine to five. And so I said, no, I can't come to the ATM meeting. I have a gym session. I don't want to miss my gym session. And he posted on TikTok. Yeah. And, um, and it's quite interesting because, you, you know, like a lot of comments were, you know, how, how can you invite the person to the ATM? And, you know, it's out of core hours and, are you going to pay them for it and the cheek of the company and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. And then, and then half of me thinks, well, you know, you've been included in the ATM meeting. Um, you've kind of excluded yourself. And I mean, you know, sometimes you've got to, you know, you've got to lean in and. Yeah. I, you know, I'm old school boss. I, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if, um, that's good or bad anymore, but I will tell you this. Um, you know, you, you, I think to the, the latter part of what you said, you were, you're invited and, if, you know, you should join. You should, you know, we, we, we try to, we try to accommodate if, you know, if, if, especially if the, the bigger team, right. Um, everyone else can make it, um, but yeah, I, I know that, it's, that social media is an interesting platform. How folks, you know, may display, you know, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. Their, their stuff, right? And um, you know, in some cases, right, if, is the, is the motive to, um, you know, perhaps make their employer look bad. Inversely, I think they may make themselves look bad. You know. Yeah, I think it's. Um... Funny one, isn't it? Because, I mean, obviously there's context, right? And if you can't come, you can pick your kids up or take your kids to school, fair, you know, fair enough. But I think okay. generally for me, you know, if it was my kid, I'd, you know, you, you, you go to the ATM meeting, you, you're you there for your manager, or, you know, your team, you put the effort in um, and you go hard, you know. I always call it like a great ground game, you know, like turn up on time, put effort in, be respectful, dress well, you know, just do what you've got to do. I agree, and and and, don't, and, and I think you brought up a good point. I don't want to be, uh, or, or or sound that you know everybody has different situations. Trust me, I, I understand. I remember, you know, where you know, you know, having, you know, especially when you have little ones, you know, yeah, having yeah. Uh, having to figure things out. Um, so yeah, no, no, certainly, but yeah, try to try to make it work, and but um, you know you can also manage those things, you know, on the side. I don't know about displaying, right. Putting that stuff out there is, that's not, whole... yeah, yeah, no, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. And also all of this actually becomes not very important. If you have a good relationship with your manager 100%. and vice versa. I think you hit on a great, great, uh, you, you made a great point there because that those, those moments are where where 
one of the most powerful things that you can give as a manager is if you have a good, if you have a good relationship with uh, your employees is to use discretion, understand their situation. Um, and, and, and that would, would go a long way. In yeah, something like definitely. That. Yeah, you've got, you know, if you, I, I was saying, I was saying to someone the other day, it's like, speak to your, you know, speak to, to your team and whatever, um, colleagues just about stuff, whatever it might be, you know, and then you have open channels of dialogue. Um, and so when it comes to, I'm really sorry, mate, like we've got, I know, you know, it's an early one for you. Do you mind coming? You can have, you know, they're not gonna be offended by it. You know, they can. You, you know, or if it's whatever else, you know, you can have a, an important conversation and it, you know, it can just be done in a, in a nice way rather than a motive and things like that. So. Exactly. Exactly. And it could be, you know, you can catch up with them before or after, you know, depending yeah. on the topic and um, the timing of it. But yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there's better ways to, to, to manage that situation. Sure. Cool. Thank you so much. We've done 40 minutes. Really? Wow, that went, that went super quick. Yeah, Lewis, this has been yeah. great. Always great to chat with you. You know, it, you know, I love we, it. yeah, and uh, love what we do. So I always uh, appreciate your friendship and partnership.